Warning, sensitive content. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. As far back as I can remember, I had a special feeling about animals. I saw their beauty. I saw their intelligence. I saw that they had emotions. I always felt that animals needed to be protected and that it was my job to protect them to the extent that I could. Supreme Master Ching Hai gratefully present the Shining World Compassion Award to Joyce Tisler in recognition of your more than 40 years of tireless work protecting the lives of animal people through the legal system with all love, respect, and appreciation. Wishing you continued success in your noble endeavors and may heaven bless you abundantly always. Continue watching to find out more. Vegan, end of the talk, beginning of the walk. Grace-filled viewers, bonjourne, means have a wonderful day in French, a language spoken in the island country of Saint Barthélemy. I'm Clement. The cheerful people of Saint Barthélemy celebrate your love and compassion for all beings on earth. Welcome to the first episode of our show entitled Joyce Tischler, Vegan, a Trailblazer for Animal People Law. For more than 40 years, Professor Tischler has dedicated her life to protecting animal people. Often referred to as the mother of animal law, Professor Tischler is internationally recognized for her trailblazing work in launching the field of animal people law. She is the co-founder and general counsel of the Animal Legal Defense Fund, or ALDF, a recipient of the Shining World Defense Award for being the first organization in the USA dedicated to championing the lives and rights of animal people through the legal system. She is also a professor at the Center for Animal Law Studies at Lewis and Clark Law School in Portland, Oregon, USA. In today's program, we learn how Professor Tischler first became involved in defending animal people. As far back as I can remember, I had a special feeling about animals. Um, most people, I think, don't really think much about other animals, dogs, cats, cows, chimpanzees, elephants. They don't give them much thought. But for me, from a very early age, they were special to me. I saw them differently. I saw their beauty. I saw their intelligence. I saw that they had emotions very much like we do. And so for me, from a very early age, I was an animal lover, whatever you call it. I didn't call it animal rights way back then because no one had invented the term yet. But I always felt that animals were my friends, that they needed to be protected, and that it was my job to protect them to the extent that I could. As a teenager, Professor Tischler participated in various human rights campaigns and decided to become a lawyer to continue this work. However, while studying law at the University of San Diego, she read a book that shifted her focus to the rights of animal people. 1975 was when uh, Animal Liberation by Peter Singer, the Australian philosopher, was published. And that book was an eye-opener for me. I always loved animals. I always had a special feeling for them that I, I knew that other people didn't share. But now I had a philosophy. Oh, animals deserve rights. And that was the year that I stopped eating meat, because once I read that book and read how badly the animals raised for food are treated, I, I had to stop. I could no longer look at myself in the mirror if I was eating animals, knowing how badly they were being treated. I wrote a law review article in, in law school about legal rights for animals. So I, that was when I first started thinking about the issue many years ago. After graduating, Professor Tischler remained passionate about safeguarding animal people's lives. But how could she help? As a newly graduated lawyer, she soon found an answer. In 1979, I met another lawyer. This was after I had graduated from law school and I had found a job with a law firm. There were no jobs in animal law. There was nothing called animal law. It didn't exist. So I got a job and I worked my day job. But I met another lawyer 
guy named Larry Kesnick. And when we met each other and we both had this interest in animal rights, we thought, well, if there's two of us, maybe there's some more. So we held our first meeting. We put an ad in the local legal newspaper and six people showed up. And all of a sudden I looked around the room and there were people who thought the way I do. And so we would meet once a month and we taught ourselves about the California laws that related to animals, offered any protections about the federal laws. We taught ourselves about the problems that animals faced, animals raised for food, animals in research labs, animals who are hunted and trapped, animals who are used in circuses and rodeos and zoos and for entertainment. We taught ourselves about each of those problems and about what laws existed. And that was the first animal law education, I guess, was, was us teaching ourselves. Using this small group as a base, Professor Tischler and Mr. Kasenik co-founded the Attorneys for Animal Rights, later renamed the Animal Legal Defense Fund, or ALDF, in 1979. Professor Tischler served as the executive director of ALDF while still working full-time at her legal firm. However, before long, she made an important career decision. There were these two threads of my life, my animal protection desires and my law career. And those two threads were in different places. And how did I bring them together? And it, it happened slowly over time. After we started this little organization where we met once a month and we're teaching ourselves about animals, I began to think that, well, you know, I'm happiest when I'm at these meetings and I'm not very happy at my law job. And there was nothing wrong with my law job. It's just that it wasn't my passion. It's not why I got up in the morning. Um, to work on business deals and wills and contracts. It just didn't appeal to me. Had I spent my entire career doing that, I would have felt that I didn't do what I really was meant to do. And so as time went by, it became more obvious to me that I needed to not be in that law firm and that I needed to work for the animals full time. True to her words, Professor Tischler left the law firm in 1981 and began working full-time at ALDF. Vegan, be the hero that we all admire. Caring viewers, we will pause for a moment to pray for world peace. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Delightful viewers, welcome back to our show, featuring the remarkable animal people rights lawyer, Professor Joyce Tischler. Professor Tischler shares how the Animal Legal Defense Fund became a national organization. After I had left my law firm and was now working full time for Animal Legal Defense Fund, the very first conference of animal rights lawyers was held in New York City over Thanksgiving weekend in 1981. There were about 60 people in a room about half of us were lawyers. And for the first time, lawyers discussed what we could do for animals with our law degrees, with our experience, with our knowledge. What could we do to make life better for other animals? And soon after that, Larry Kesenick and I formed a, a national board of directors. In the beginning, Professor Tischler personally handled many of the ALDF lawsuits. She thought it would be easy to persuade judges that the animal people she was defending must be protected. However, she soon learned this was not the case. The main obstacle was that, under existing laws, animal people are classified as property. Animals are property. What does that mean? In the eyes of the law, a lamp, a couch, a car, those are all property. I can do with my property what I wish, for the most part. I can have my car destroyed. I can set my couch on fire. I can beat my refrigerator. The only way in which the law recognizes that animals are different is in the cruelty laws. Animals are commodities. What does that mean? You can buy them and you can sell them. Dairy cows are sold so that they can be put into production and produce babies. Dairy cows have to produce babies in order to produce milk, like all mammals. And then those babies are immediately taken away and those babies are then sold or put someplace so that they can be raised either to be put back in the herd and be used or to be eaten as veal calves. 
So animals are commodities. Animals in zoos are commodities. People come to zoos and pay money so that they can see the animals. I view those animals as prisoners. They don't want to be in a zoo. They want to be with their families. They want to be free, just as we do. A second problem, Professor Tischler explains, is the lack of laws that protect animal people. While some regulations help prevent cruelty towards our companion animal friends, there are almost no laws governing the well-being of other types of animal people. You love your cat, and the law protects your cat more than other animals, whereas there is no federal law that protects a cow or a chicken or any other farmed animal while they're being raised. Doesn't exist. No law. There are laws to protect that cow going through slaughter and during transport. But those laws are not well enforced. Why? Because it's inconvenient. Most animals who are in our lives, we eat, we wear, we research on, they're very badly treated. So what do you do with a legal system in which the animals are badly treated, in which there are very few laws that protect them? How do you create greater protections? And that is the dilemma that we have faced. Our sincere appreciation, Professor Tischler, and all who are dedicated protecting animal people by challenging and improving the laws. Wishing you much success now and in the future. Supreme Master Ching Hai gratefully present the Shining World Compassion Award to Joyce Tischler in recognition of your more than 40 years of tireless work protecting the lives of animal people through the legal system with all love, respect, and appreciation. Wishing you continued success in your noble endeavors and may heaven bless you abundantly always. Supreme Master Ching Hai is deeply grateful to the most merciful beloved God for all the financial help, comfort, and support to the afflicted and needy and or any good cause over the years as a humble vessel for His compassion and love toward His precious children. For more information on the Animal Legal Defense Fund, please visit aldf.org. Become a vegetarian. Eat plant-based to help save animals and the planet. Arie Domba, vegetarian. Gentle viewers, thank you for spending your precious time with us today. Please join us next week on Thursday, August 25th, for part two of this show. Coming up next is The Real Signs of Heaven's Warning for Humans to Change, part four of eight, on Between Master and Disciples, right after Noteworthy News. May peace from God prevail in every moment of your lives. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash VE. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique VE. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com bar inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com bar inclinada VE. I nostri programmi sono offerti molte lingue. Consultate suprememastertv.com mastertv.com barra schedule e su primastertv.com barra VE 